was born in L.A. Um, at a uh, Monterey Park Hospital. Mm-hmm. And tell me about your home life. My home life, um, I grew up in, initially I grew up until I was five in Lincoln Heights and we moved to La Puente. When we made the move to La Puente, that's when um, I went to my first gym, which was the Ballin Park Boys and Girls Club. And uh, it's been history since then. Mm-hmm. And who, did you have brothers, sisters? Who did you grow up with? I have uh, one brother and three sisters. My grandparents, um, fortunately, um, took us under their wing. Mm-hmm. At the time, my mom needed assistance. Um, you know, I, uh, I had a broken, uh, broken home. So um, my grandparents took us under their wing, and um, I grew up with them. They raised us. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a great... Um, it was a great experience, and I appreciate what they've done. They've, uh, they, they helped, uh, they helped me grow and uh, pursue my career until uh, I became an adult. Then it was, you know, ultimately my call. Mm-hmm. And what kind of kid were you? I was a great kid. I, I believe. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I uh, got into small time trouble. I, you know, initially um, when we had made the move, um, I, I was in and out of, you know, I, my grandparents took us under their wing when I was like 12 years old. So before that, you know, I was off and on with them and then with my mom. When I'd stay with my mom, um, I tended to um, venture off and get into my own little trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so um, you know, uh, I I I got I got I got a little taste of the streets. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't nothing, you know, major. It was just, you know, hanging around with the wrong uh, wrong crowd. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, mainly um, something that uh, my grandfather saw, and he just that's when he had decided that it wasn't the right environment for me. And like I said, he fortunately, um, he kind of, uh, he spoke with my mother and my mother agreed at the time. Uh, it was the right time to, you know, uh, live with him and my grandmother. So that's when, uh, that's when he, he came to me and he had told me, you know, um, uh, we want to, you know, we want to help your mother out and guys and um, adopt you. So they adopted my brothers and my sisters and I. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, who got you interested in boxing to begin with? He did. He did. My grandfather. Yeah. You know? um, and it was a blessing. You know, it was something that I feel uh, it was. Um, I mean, he, he just believed that that was a sport for me, and he was right. He was right on. Um, I've had my battles with boxing. And my relationship with boxing, uh, you know, has been a, a teeter-totter at times, but for the most part, it's it's been a, a steady, uh, uh, you know, steady, uh, great adventure. Mm-hmm. And were you good as soon as you started? Um, I, I, there was definitely some talent, you know, hitting the bag, um, my, you know, my trainer then, um, he had mentioned to my grandfather, I believe, you know, that, that I was talented, you know, and then, uh, there, there was one trainer that, uh, that he had had me train with for like two or three months, and then Eddie the Animal Lopez, I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Mm Mm-hmm. He started training me, um, and uh, you know, it was it was great. You know, he taught me a lot of stuff, you know, and, and uh, you know, he, he knew a lot about you know, about the boxing, and you know, he had me spar, and for the first time I sparred, and it was great. You know, um, 
we we were we were, we were we were under his wing for about excuse me, I'd say about seven, eight months maybe. And then um we had gone to our first fight. We had gone a couple of fights and one of the fights was um it, Ramona Garn. And that's where we met Joey Olivo. Mm-hmm. And, uh... I thought you were done. No, uh, and, um, Joey Olivo, uh, you know, um, he was friends of, uh, my uncle. And we had asked my uncle about him. And my uncle had told us about him, and he said, you know, he's a great trainer. You know, he'd be a great trainer. And at the time, uh, Eddie, um had some issues that he was going through so um we felt that it was best uh to part ways and um you know we kind of just told him like we're gonna Mm -hmm. we're gonna gonna move on and he's okay with it um we asked joey we uh yeah joey uh we'd be able to come to the gym and, and train with them and he agreed, and and you know he he took me along my career from the age of six to eighteen, up until um, she's up until my first professional fight. Mm-hmm. And when what age were you when you turned amateur officially? Eight years old. The the like the month after. Eight years old. Like, uh, yeah. Wow. And what was your? Yeah whole record isn't Jeez. it my amateur record I'd have to say um it was a, like 140 150 and like 18 losses 17 18 losses wow. yeah it, I had a really good record and uh, I'm very proud of my record then you won the silver medal in the 1998 International Junior Olympics how'd you feel winning the silver medal it was great I thought they brought me you know I thought that I'd won the gold I'm not, I'm not going to be, I'm, okay, I'm a little sour about it. I'm not going to lie, you know. <laughs> it was something that I worked, I worked hard for, you know, and, and uh, what an awesome adventure to, to be able to spend time at the University of um, Northern Michigan, Northern Michigan University, and, um, you know, I, I stayed there for about uh, two weeks, and uh, I got to train under um, the guidance of a uh, gentleman who they had, uh, um, they'd put, he was from Texas, I forget his name, I can't, I can't think of his name right now. But uh, this guy, you know, um, and, and you know, the trainers pretty much told us, um, we're not gonna try and change you, we're just gonna try and help you. So it was great, you know, I had a great time, I trained hard. Um, and then from there, from the two weeks we trained there, and then I flew over to Mexico, and um, we were in Ensenada. I had the first fight, I believe. Uh, I beat the a guy from um, Ukraine. I want to say something like that. And uh, second fight, I beat the Mexico B team and I was like what? They have an A and B? So I was a little confused about that but I beat him. You know? <laughs> Whatever. You know, give me a freaking fight. I beat him and then they had the Mexico A team which consisted of a gentleman by the name of Francisco Bojado. Mm-hmm. Francisco Bojado funny I beat Francisco Bojado to get to that point. But the reason why I had to fight him twice was because he decided that he was going to lose here in the U.S. and then jump ship to Mexico and then represent the Mexican team. Mm. So I'm a little bit bitter, I'm not going to lie, only because with that, uh, he, you know, he, he, really deterred any type of hopes uh, for me to join the Olympic team. And and it just, you know, that just really, really bothered me. But 
you know, I'm not, what are you going to do? You know, so, I, um, what's that? Good. Did you feel you won that fight too? You felt, I mean, you I felt I won it. Mm -hmm. I felt I won it. It was two to one. And, you know, there was two Mexican judges and one Japanese judge. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I just... I just feel that uh, something was fishy there, you know, but mm -hmm. what are you going to, like I say, there's nothing I could say, there's nothing I could do, I just accepted it, you know, and, you know, walked out with my head held high because uh, my family showed up, it was great, you know, my family and friends, they went all the way to the TJ to help me out and cheer me on, it was great, you mm -hmm. know, it was, it was just, a, it was a, it was a, a great um, adventure for me, you know, one of my many. Mm -hmm. So, so I went, uh, I, you know, I got a silver medal in the uh, Junior uh, Olympics the, the, uh, yeah. World Championships. Then you won the gold medal at the 98 U.S. Junior Olympics. How'd that feel to win gold that went all the uh, way? You know, you know, it was, um, it, it's just a, a, um, a great, a great feeling, you know, just to, to be able to work hard. You know, there's not many people um, who understand the, uh, the hard work that I put into my training. A lot of people, you know, naturally are going to um, highlight the flaws in, in, your, uh, in your career. And uh, a lot of people have, you know, may have, may have uh, perceived me as, you know, not working hard or, or whatever because of my issues with weight and all that, but I've worked very hard my whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, I I, uh, I I put a lot of hard work, and it's just a, a great thing to to be able to show that hard work and win. You know, and and win the gold and be the the the, the best. You know, that there is in the nation or in the world, even or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, so. So that's what I was getting at is, uh, yeah, it's just all that put into that last, you know, night or that fight, that last fight, it's just awesome to be able to get your hand raised. Yeah. It's, it's something that I'm sure that uh, you could ask any fighter and he'll agree that it's one of the greatest films in the world, you know? Yeah, yeah and it is. Congratulations. It is. It is. It's great. Uh, thank gold. you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Then you were a semi-finalist in the 99 U.S. under 19. Yeah. Coaches. What was that like? That was cool. Um, I uh, I went up against one of my arch rivals, uh, Steven Luevano. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was it was just another close fight. It, it was something about him that just kind of, uh, you know, left me... You know, we met up about five times or something like that, and and he, you know, he defeated me three out of the five. So he got more defeats uh, uh, than me, which kind of, you know, me being a fighter, of course, you know, a, a winning fighter, you know, um, I uh, it bothers me a little. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It bothers me, but for the most part, though, I mean. You know, I mean, kudos to him, you know? Yeah. What, what more can I, I'm not going to talk bad about the guy. He's a fighter, you know? He's a good fighter, you know? Uh, well, I wouldn't say go that far. I'd say good, but he knew how to maneuver uh, enough to to get a win. So, um, you know, uh, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that, that was that story about, about that. And then you um, there are there are some there are some uh, silver gloves and national championships that I won, um, which is awesome. Another great feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. I had gone one time. My first time going over to Lenexa, Kansas, was when I was eight years old, and um, I got a silver medal that year. And I said, I told myself, the next time I come here, I'm gonna win a gold. And I earned a trip, I believe the year after or two years down the road. And I went all the way and 
I won gold, and then I did it again, and I won gold again, and then I did it again, and I won gold again. <laughs> so, so I was pretty, uh, I was pretty uh, victorious uh, with um, being able to follow through and win that tournament there, Silver Glows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, was blue you, and gold. I'm sorry. sorry. Was your yeah. was your last um, competition as an amateur the '99 Police Athletic League tournament? Was that the last one? Um, it may have been. Yeah, that was when I had gone to uh, Orlando. Yeah. The yeah. national. I was overweight, of course, you know, because I just, you know, I'm a growing boy and I had weight problems. Mm-hmm. And what, what happened in that tournament, though? Um, I went all the way up to the nationals, and then the nationals came around, and then something happened where I just, I couldn't make the weight. I don't know why. I worked hard. I sweat a lot, a lot, a lot, you know, and um, I just couldn't make it. So, you know, I, there, you there's not who? much. I was going to fight. It's funny because I think I was going to fight Darling Jimenez, mm-hmm. who later beat me. Mm-hmm. He's, he's one of my defeats, you know, mm-hmm. um, and I lost to him on walkover. Because yeah. I was just overweight, a couple of pounds, and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, you know. But this is what it is. Like I said, you know, I, I take my losses and, with the green rice. You know, mm-hmm. I don't really, I don't really dwell on them. I used to. I used to. Uh, I used to be. It used to get me down to the extreme, mm-hmm. and then, um, and then I said, you know. I'm getting in the ring with another guy, and that's it. No one else is, you know. So, you know, whatever, you know. Like, uh, somewhat happened. I was a lose. I might only take it, you know. Mm-hmm. I might only take it extremely horrible and be. That's, I, I had, I had, um, I had to live up to um, a high. It, it would seem like when I was young, um, I had to live up. I had a, there were high expectations, mm-hmm. so it was hard for me a little. Yeah. It was a little difficult, but for the most part, you know, uh, it, yeah, my my amateur career turned out okay. Mm-hmm. And what made you decide to turn pro when you did? <sighs> because I could. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I said I, I'm. I wanted to turn pro. I mean, ever since I was an amateur, I wanted to be pro. So. So uh, as soon as I could, I mean, you could see I'm, you know, when I turned pro, it was a month after my birthday. Now, being such a successful amateur, you had to have, like, a lot of high power people coming after you. Who was coming after you at the time? At the time, um, top rank, we were negotiating with top rank, um, <clears throat> and, um, there was, uh, a couple other offers that we had had. I can't think of the names, but they were private to manage me more than promote me. Um, Top Rank was was a major one, though. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, and then a gentleman, Frank Espinosa, came into my career, um, and he built me up. uh, I believe it was 15 and, oh, with like 13 knockouts or something like that. Mm -hmm. A great record, you know, and... um, and, uh, you know, I, I fought uh, for him during that time. During that time, I, I had a great relationship with a gentleman by the name of Chop the Robles. Chop, Chop the Robles mm-hmm. was my trainer during all that time and just a great, great, great trainer. And who was your trainer uh, in your it, first fight, when you first turned pro? Was it him too? Um, my, uh, Joey. Joey was. What's his name, and Joey? What? That, Joey Olivo. Okay. Yeah, he was my trainer up until that fight. And then um, we had to, it was like a little mix-up, and it was just kind of like we agreed to disagree, and we, we, we parted ways like that. Do you remember who you fought first and where it was and what the result was? Um, I fought at Fantasy Springs Casino. Um, it was a month after my birthday, uh, May, um, 
it was May 16th, I believe, something like that. It was against a gentleman by the name of Ramon Ortiz, I think. I, I could be, I could be wrong, but wrong yeah. on the date. May it was May sixth. It was May sixth, not sixteenth. Oh, okay. That's not right. That's not but right. everything, <laughs> everything else was okay. I still got my marbles. Are you testing me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's good. laughs> it was fourth, the fourth round knockout. You know, the guy was tough. He was tough. He came to fight, and you know, I came to fight naturally, and uh, you know, I was just fighting i was just fighting you know i was i was nervous you know i was in the dressing room and they said you might go up now i was like a swing bout mm -hmm. so you might go up now you might go up now you might go up now and i was just like the whole time just you know getting ready i remember pacing back and forth and joey joey was nervous too for me and <laughs> you know my grandfather was there and he was nervous too and that didn't make it any better so <laughs> You know, and, and I had my family out front, you know, my family was, uh, you know, cheering me on and friends and stuff had come over to see me. So, you know, it was like my first time on the big stage and, you know, I remember being in the back in the dressing room. They had those tents, you know, and outside. And I remember looking outside, like peering outside and looking at the crowd. And I was just like in awe, you know, like, damn, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fight, you know, and I'm. I'm not going to have a headgear, and I'm not going to, you know, it's going to be eight ounce gloves, and this guy's going to try to rip my head off. Yeah. But I I thought about that for a minute, and then I didn't, you know? Mm. I just kind of forgot about it, and I just said, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, mm. it is what it is. I got to do what I got to do. I'm here. I'm here now. There's no going back. Mm -hmm. You know, so they called me up, and it was, like I say, yeah, it was it was, it was, a, it was a great showing. It was a great fight for me. And how did it feel winning your first fight? Being able to to get that knockout was so uplifting. Uh, uh, with, you know, just with my self esteem, with everything, because at the time I wasn't sure. I mean, I was sure about my abilities, but I just wasn't sure if it was if I was cracked up. To be, you know, I was just nervous. Mm -hmm. So being able to accomplish that, um, it was it was just a, a very very pivotal in my life. You know, in general, you know, just my life period. You know, I just just kind of brought a new um, confidence to to my being. You know, because of what I've gone through in the past, it was kind of erased a little with that win. You know, like I'm in the big leagues now, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, so it was, um, it was awesome. It, it did great for me. Yeah. Really, really did. And you fought. You kept getting win after win, and then you finally had your first big test. I'd say against Ever Bellino. Oh man! I'm about that fight, man. Did you feel like oh. you so much? <laughs> that guy was uh, an experienced, crafty veteran who came to make it the hardest on me. <laughs> he was a southpaw. He was a crazy Colombian. He had a sick record of like 38 wins and like 35 knockouts. Mm. He may have had 11 losses, but he had 35 knockouts out of his 38 wins. Mm. So a lot of you know, he, like, you know I, after, after I said, shit, for my first real test, that's not all that bad. The guy cut me the first round or yeah the first round and uh, the second round second round i believe and i went on and i fought on he cut me twice he cut me in the first on um, the second round and the eighth round i believe mm -hmm. and um uh, and i you know i went on to uh beat him unanimously you know 10 rounds mm -hmm. after that i remember you know coming down my like, cut man was chuck bodak mm -hmm. Chuck Borak was my cut man, one of the best cut men, if yeah, not the man. best cut men out there. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, ever. <laughs> and, uh, and, um, you know, and, and, and Chuck <laughs> was just a good guy and he said, shit, kid, you, can't, you got a lot of blood. <laughs> Let me work on this. So he took me right away, he did his thing, and, and, uh, he stopped the bleeding. 
And it's funny because I got, there's a, my, the friends, really good friends of mine, they have a collection of photos of me, you know, kind of uh, during the times that um, I fought and, you know, there's some, some times when I fought in the amateurs or whatever. So and they've, they've, you know, these, these individuals have followed my career since I was eight years old. And then it's in their hall and they have like a little wall of fame and and there's one picture of me after the ever Bolenio fight laying down and just, you know, kind of giving a, a fist up and uh, um, they have it of my eyes and both of my eyes are wide open, just mean gashes, it's disgusting. It's just like two inch gashes and, 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 and I see, wow, you know what I mean? Just to be able to go on and fight like that, you know, and Chuck, you know, luckily I had Chuck in my corner because, you know, he was able to, to, to stop the bleeding and then, you know, he did some where, you know, he diverted the bleeding. Mm -hmm. I don't know what Chuck did. Mm -hmm. You know, Chuck worked his magic, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and, and it, it wasn't stopped. The fight wasn't stopped and it went on and I won. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, how do you feel in the dressing room when, Chuck Bodak first. You see him with pictures of you all over his head. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. I had told him too. I had noticed that. And there were ugly pictures like, uh, you know, back in the day, I was like, I had this ugly looking style. And I, I said, Chuck, is that me on your head? <laughs> he says, you're lucky, kid. Today's your day, you know. So, and, and, he, and, and every time I would fight, you know, we fought. Um, he was in my corner. Uh, up until my my from my second fight, I believe, which was at the pond, to um, my fifteenth fight, which was there at Saboba, he was in my corner, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, and after you know uh, after the Saboba fight, um, Oscar De La Hoya Promotions, uh, Golden Boy Promotions. Uh, they, I guess, they signed me, and that's when, you know, Chuck and Oscar didn't get along. So it was kind of, it was kind of an uncomfortable, uncomfortable party. Mm -hmm. you know, and Chuck, I had, I had uh, gotten a hold of Chuck a couple fights after because Chuck naturally he was hurt a little bit, um, and uh, I got a hold of my passport to him in person and we kind of made amends, you know. I, I said, hey, Chuck, you know, I just got to do what I got to do. I, um, you know, I, as soon as I have, as soon as I can, you know, um, yeah, you know, we could we could do this again, or he, he tells me, no, I'm just, I'm going to retire, you know. I'm going to hang him up. Mm. And um, a couple of, uh, a few months after that, um, Chuck passed. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. He was he was tired, you know. Yeah. You feel it but, at that age, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know. It, it was it, I saw him at at the uh, Chapel Road this funeral. That's right. Hmm. Yeah, and that's when he told me that, you know, and I said, Wow. Who was it? Who did you say? Chapel Road when oh, okay. he passed. Yeah. Chuck Chuck 'cause Chuck and Chapel they were really close. So I finally saw him and, you know, he gave me the finger and I said, that's when I went up and hugged him, you know, because I hadn't spoke to him. I wasn't, a, you know, I was, I was a little iffy about, you know, how Chuck was going to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, talk to me or if he was even going to give me his time, you know, but he gave me the finger and that's when I, I went up and I, <laughs> that was mm -hmm. like, kind of like the sign of what's up, mm -hmm. you know, so that's when we made amends and I told him, you know, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I told him I was sorry. And I was sorry that we had to part, you know, because I loved the guy. I really did. I really loved him. Chapter Robles, I loved, you know, just awesome, awesome individual, old school, really old school. You know, uh, they were, they were, you know, if, if you, if there was um, a symbol uh, comprised of. The individuals involved in boxing, they would be a part of them. Yeah, it's true. And how uh, how did you feel at that time after beating Belenia? Did you feel like you were ready for anybody at that point? Um, 
I was definitely um I had my 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 self esteem was definitely high. Hmm. Yeah. Did you say? Oh. Um I was I was definitely um you know, I, I was I was my self esteem was high and I I I felt that passing that test I grew up a little bit, you know, and um yeah, maybe, you know, like I was ready for, for the next one. You know, mm -hmm. I was, I said, I'm just gonna, I gotta heal and on to the next one. You know, um, mm -hmm. bring them on. You know, it's kind of like, that's, that's kind of how I've been my whole career. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's times when I'm, I'm blind, you know, and, and then, you know, there's not much film and there's not much knowledge of the fighter, but I would just go in and do it. You know, all right, let's go. Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, uh, I, love, I love to do it. Yeah, you know, I love to do it. I love, you know, when I believe, I believe in my abilities and when they tell me, you know, you got a fighter, his name, I don't know him, not very much footage, and eh, it is what it is. Let's go. Let's fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever. Warrior. Yeah, that's how you do it, right? You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's, thought, oh, that's, thought you were done. <laughs> What's that? I thought you were done. I was gonna. Oh, oh no, no, no! But that's that's how I. I just want to say that that's how how I I um I look at you know all my fights now. You know, I I don't anticipate. I participate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. so, and you fought Angel Rios. Tell me about that fight. You. That fight was a test also. Um, that was the first big uh, on stage uh, performance, um, signing up with Golden Boy. You know, um, it was at the Grand Olympic Auditorium. Awesome. Mm -hmm. There's electricity in the audience. I know what they say. I know what, how that feels, you know, when you have electricity, because it was the first time that they had a big show. There, I, I believe they had, had other shows, but this one was like a really big one, and I was, um, I was, a, I was excited. I was nervous. I was just. I remember Angel Rios. Uh, he came to fight. I remember giving him giving me attitude in the dressing room. I mean, I'm sorry, in the press conference. I said, "This guy's gonna want to fight." <laughs> You know, and uh, he was, he was, a, he was a tough fighter. You know, we, we took it all, I believe it went 10. We fought for like the WBC youth title and mm -hmm. that's when I beat him. Um, he was crafty, you know, um, he, uh, not much. He was uh, crafty with his hands, not with his feet. He was very, very, um, how can I say? like a tank like you know it was just bulky and you know he just come at me and he just a lot of pressure but i was able to outbox him i just outboxed him and uh you know i got the w and we got the that wbc um, youth under that one which was awesome mm -hmm. it was uh, in front of uh, like a, a crowd of like six thousand or seven thousand or something like that mm -hmm. I, I, so that I was pretty cool you're a real good interviewer because you answered like every question i had about that fight <laughs> I was going to ask you how you felt about fighting at the the uh, Olympic Auditorium, but you, you know, it, you know, it was big, right? You know, well, let, me, let me tell you, let me tell you, it saddens me to see that it's a church now because mm. the Grand Olympic Auditorium. I said to myself, I I I want to fight there. It was a goal of mine, and it's something that you know, a goal, a mountain that I've I've overcome and I've climbed because. It was just, it was just a great boxing venue, and I've, I used to hear about it all the time. Joey Olivo, he'd tell me stories, and I'd always hear the Grand Olympic Auditorium, Grand mm -hmm. Olympic Auditorium, Grand Olympic Auditorium, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I, I, I believe it was Eileen Eden who used to match make there, and they'd do it every week. Mm -hmm. And they had a Grand Olympic Auditorium, uh, you know, um, series, boxing series, and I said, one day I want to fight there. You know, and, and I finally, I mean, I fought there uh, two, three times. I got to fight twice, I believe, yeah. Um, but it was just a great both times, you know. Uh, 
I was it three times. Did I fight there three times? I think I did. Mm -hmm. You want me to check it out? Yeah, well, I, I, do you have the, I, I, I just it. thought you had the record. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I fought, I, I fought three times. I think it was three. That was yeah, three. yeah. Yeah, three. Yeah, okay. Three. Okay, three. yeah, and it was, every time it was just a great experience. You know, it was, it was awesome. The, the, the crowd there was, it was just a boxing venue, and, and I, it, you know, that's something that we need to resurrect. Yeah. That's, that's a boxing venue. That's not a church. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, it's a church now. What is that? You know, I want to buy it back, man. That's funny, man. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true, though. And how did it feel after being the champion of the WBC youth? What did I feel like? That was great. It was great, you know. I Again, I had um, a lot of my family there and friends and and a lot of people who I didn't know, you know, um, coming up to me, hey champ, you know, it's good. It feels good to, you know, it's just, it's an awesome feeling to, to be able to be on top of, uh, and, and hold a big title. Good. Yeah, and, and be good at what you do, mm -hmm. you know, and, and be able to show off your accolades a little, you know, the, the WBC youth, it's still WBC, right. even though it's youth, you know, it's a world championship, which is awesome. Is the belt and, still uh, green? Is the belt green? Yeah. 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 It's beautiful. The belt's green. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. That'd be cool. So, just having people want to hold your belt and stuff. Yeah, cool. even that. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's a, it's a great feeling because when you're working, you're working extremely hard and when you have that belt around your waist, or when you're able to just have the belt, it's like, shit, this mm -hmm. is awesome. Mm -hmm. This is why I work hard. You know, I mean, or or even, you know, the, the trophies that I've had. Mm -hmm. you know, I had, you know, over 100 trophies, but each trophy, I would, I'd love showing them off because that was my hard work, you know? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to know that, you know, to know that, you know, there's, there's a symbol, you know, that's out there showing how much hard work you put into a specific fight or whatever. It's right there, you know, mm -hmm. and it's first place, it's a winner, you know. You get the world championship, I got the WBO championship of the world, you know. I got that belt, you know, beside the WBC, mm -hmm. you know, and it's awesome. It's a great feeling. Yeah. And the next fight you fought Roque Cassiani. Yeah, Rocky Rocky Cassiani. Oh, that sorry. guy was another crafty veteran. You know, they, they just kept bringing him on, <laughs> and you know what? I kept beating him. I kept beating him. Rocky Cassiano, I, Cassiani. I remember him back in the in the gym. We'd always see each other. He was a friend of mine. Hmm. You know, it wasn't like you know they. Like, you know, we were enemies, or he was at a key. He was just there to fight, so we fought, you know, and, and I ended up knocking him out in the 10th round, which is like phenomenal uh, uh, performance that I put on. You know, what, what I was able to get that knockout, you know, and, and it was just something, you know, that the crowd loved, you know, mm. naturally. So so I was, I, I was excited about that, you know. Yeah. And what about the Silverio Ortiz fight? About that so very Ortiz, I, I believe I got cut like in the fifth or sixth, and they stopped it because he was just. Oh no, I'm sorry. They stopped it because I broke his nose. Mm -hmm. They stopped in the fourth round. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and um, uh, I remember when I had cracked him. I believe it was in the third round, and it was just like something that you could. You know, it was outdoors, and you could hear an echo still when the nose broke. Man, it was, it was nasty. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't even know. You know, I caught him with an uppercut, and I, I'm not sure if it was a left or right uppercut, but I, I caught him, and uh, I, I could just hear that crack. Mm -hmm. Wow! I, I didn't know what to do because I didn't know what it was, and then all of a sudden, just blood started gushing out of his nose, and I was like, Shh, "Yeah." <laughs> so so he went back the third round he came out the fourth we started fighting again 
Ray uh, stopped it and uh, he to my doctor, Dr. Wade with off because it was just gushing. It was bad. Mm. Then you it fought. was a great performance. Yeah. That's when you were doing your thing big. You loved yeah. It. You loved doing it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then yeah, you fought, uh, you fought Goyo Vargas. What did you see? That him? was a good Next one. champ. That was a test. That was another test. That was another part, you know? Mm. I mean, all the hurdles that they, they put in front of me. I mean, just go to Vargas was another test, and they had told me, like, this guy is dangerous. When I saw him, I was like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how dangerous this guy's going to be, but okay. <laughs> and he was, you know? He, he was a dangerous, crafty veteran, but mm. I went, and I outboxed the shit out of him. And, and I dropped him in the sixth, I believe. And uh, um, I angered him a little. He started pressuring me more, and he started coming at But I was just all boxing him. And I just, that was one of the greatest performances of my career. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, what I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you fought Jose Soto Carras. Tell me about that one. Yeah. He was tough. Um, I believe it was stopped of another cut. Uh, he he headbutted me, and... You know, uh, we fought, um, we were fighting up until the 5th, and I still wanted to fight. The doctor said, no, I said, come on, you know, I, I want to beat this guy, you know, and, and they waited it off. I said, shit. So, I mean, it was just, uh, it was it was a great performance uh, that was, uh, well, it was a performance uh, that was, um, you know, um, interfered because of uh cut, you know, which is, it's just unfortunate, because I, I did why I wanted to fight him, you know, he was tough, he was a tough guy, yeah. but and I believe it. his brother is doing bigger, bigger things now, I believe, mm -hmm. than, than him, because I haven't heard of him, I haven't really heard too much about him, no, I, mean, I don't think much, of <laughs> nothing, much of nothing going on in that guy's life, <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was the fight before you got your championship shot. How'd that fight come up? How'd the champion, how'd you get your shot at the title? Um, the championship, from what I remember, uh, Golden Boy had told me, I'm going to fight this guy, Gavin Reese. And I say, cool, let's fight him. And then I guess he fell out. And then they said, shit. We don't have the guy, uh, but we got a fill in. Um, this guy's a tough little Argentinian guy. He has 55 fights, something like that. 50 wins, 5 losses, and 35 knockouts, I think. And uh, now I remember all this because I don't remember. My record, I, I remember it from seeing my record and seeing this guy's record, and I said, 50 fights, five losses, 35 knockouts? Another hurdle, you know? It's another hurdle. <laughs> These guys aren't giving me a break. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, it was tough as shit. He came to fight, and we fought till the 12th round. I remember I dropped him. The talk, I believe. Um, you know, throughout the whole fight, though, he he put on, you know, he he boxed me. I I outboxed him the whole fight, mm -hmm. but he tried to, you know, fight me, and I just didn't. I didn't let him, you know. And I outboxed him, and you know, I, I did my my movements, and I I worked I worked them. I mean, the 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 scores were were lopsided mm -hmm. um, because. Uh, you know, I deserved that. You know, I mean, I won every round pretty much, you know, uh, with the exception of a couple, you know, but for the most part, I mean, I just all boxed him and I put, over, I put on a great performance. You know, the, you know, the guy, he was tough though. I'll tell you that. Tough how'd Argentinian. You, yeah. How'd you feel in the dressing room before the fight? Were you <laughs> confident? <laughs> I was a little bit of both. <clears throat> um, I was more in awe because it was my championship fight. 
you know, something that I had built up my whole life. It's something that any, any boxer would say, that's what they want. You know, their whole life, they, they build up to that moment where they're able to say, I'm gonna fight for the championship of the world. You're gonna be, you're gonna fight for the spot to be the best at whatever weight class it is, the best in the world. So, the feeling afterward, um, it was, it was something, you know, that it, it's very hard to explain. I just couldn't believe it. Like, I stayed in the dressing room for, you know, a good half hour just looking at the belt. You know, I put it around my waist and I just, you know, I, I, I you know, I raised it up in the air. I, you know, I was showing it off everywhere, you know. I, I carried it around my waist, around my uh, chest, you know, and just, it was awesome after we, we went out and uh, went out to like a nightclub or something like that and I had her on my waist you know I you was know, champion of the world mm. you know, it was awesome yeah. it was a great feeling and then you had your next fight against Jorge Barrios what happened to Jorge that? Barrios that fight <laughs> was extremely extremely horrible <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. You know, um, my preparation was bad. I had, you know, I had a, a flimsy uh, nutritionist who who said yes when I wanted to do stuff, and it was just bad. The whole thing was just bad. You know, uh, the, the the training camp was bad. Um, I went. I went. And I was in Paso Robles initially. And then they moved me over to Florida, which was new to me. Um, well, the good thing about it was, uh, one of the good things about it was I was under the, um, the tutelage of uh, Buddy McGirt. Mm. And uh, he's, a great, he's a great trainer. Um, I just wasn't um, a focused fighter at the time mm. because of all the, uh, all the distractions that were brought on to me. Um, by myself and individuals in my corner. Mm -hmm. um, it was it was something uh, that um, I, I, I went through a lot, a lot. I mean, uh, my body went through a lot and it took a lot of damage before. It took more damage. Um, I definitely wasn't prepared and uh, I have no excuses. You know, a lot of people, you know, they, they ask me, like, you know, you know, what happened? And, and I'll tell them the same thing that I'm telling you because, you know, I, I, I pretty much just messed it up myself, you know? Hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't blame anybody but me because I, I allowed it to happen, which was something that, you know, um, it's just something that I feel better about. I'm not going to pass the blame. You know, mm -hmm. it was my fault. I let it happen. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? You know, it's been over with now. It's a learning experience. I learned from that, mm -hmm. and um, and I moved on from it. You know, uh, it's not something that will haunt me for the rest of my life or anything. You know, it's just something that I chose to do. Yeah. I chose to, and, uh, you know, whatever distractions that I've had and stuff, I allowed them to be, to distract me. Because when I'm focused, I will focus. Yeah. So, and, and I just wasn't focused. You know? mm -hmm. I just wasn't, uh, I was just, uh, I allowed, um, I allowed just too much. Yeah. How'd you feel? Much BS. How'd you feel, like, after you lost that fight, did you? feel like maybe you were done or did you feel like you, you might no, I knew I wasn't no, I knew I wasn't mm -hmm. I knew I wasn't done I, I knew that it was just something that you know it was something that I again allowed to happen um, mm -hmm. I I feel like um, I felt um, like I felt horrible about you know the loss and just everything and everyone I 
I felt horrible because I let down my fam. Mm -hmm. That's something that, I mean, I, I, I believe I've said that before, and I'll say it again because that's something that now I, I you know, as a grown man, I, I think about that and it's, it's like, wow, you know, I, I put so much into, into the, uh, how can I say, um, the approval of my fans, whomever they may be, my family, my friends, strangers, whatever, they're my fans. And, and I put so much on having them enjoy the fight more than me surviving. <laughs> you know, my focus is, is to not only fight and win, but to do it in a, in, in a great fashion, you know, to be able to entertain. And that's something that, um, that I've always done. Really, I mean, I, I love being on the stage. I love being, and I love to fight, and I'm all I'm pretty good at it. You know? So I I emphasize on I'm performing mm -hmm. um, for for you know the crowd. Yeah, how'd you feel going in the ring in your next fight after being being? Did you feel the same, or did you feel like there might you be know, some doubts there? No, you know what I. But I, I really had no doubt, you know, like I knew I was going to go in and I was going to win mm -hmm. because I just knew it, you know, like there's something, you know, I, I just said, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to do it. And I did it. You know, I did it. I, uh, who was it against after that? Um, you have the, you have the yeah, record. Uh, right after that fight. It was, let's see. Antonio Ramirez. In the oh, Bronx. that was a great fight. Yeah, in the Bronx. Yeah. That was a great fight. That was a great, um, uh, I mean, the guy was tough. Hmm. You know, he was tough, and he hit pretty hard, too. And I remember, uh, you know, going into that fight, it was my first time fighting in New York, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. New York is an awesome you know, state, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah really cool. And, and I got to fight in front of a, uh, you know, it was a pretty, uh, pretty big crowd at the, uh, the old uh, ballroom or Broadway or something. Broadway mm. something. And, um, Broadway. <laughs> yeah. It was really cool, though. Yeah, it was like a theater. It was a yeah. theater. A Bronx theater. Broadway theater. Yeah. So, so um, you know, it was great. Uh, I put on a great performance. That's when... I trained uh, under the watchful eye of a gentleman by the name of Leo Bellacides. You want me to spell that for you? Yeah. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> How was that was Leo, Leo Bellacides. T H E. Uh -huh. um, T H E. L A. S. I T T E S. Yeah, okay. Is that Dallas Eadies? Yeah. Somewhat like it. Sounds okay, like cool. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's he's a he's a, he, at the time he was an 83 year old Marine, Army, Navy, uh, 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 um, uh, all the, uh, he he he's got an award for being in all the armed forces. Mm. Guys, a, a Greek nut, you know yeah. what I mean, just awesome. And I trained under his watchful eye, and and um, and uh, he got me that win. He helped get me that win. You yeah. know, he helped. Uh, he helped me out with that fight. You know, and and uh, and a great guy. You know, and and I'd like to mention his name because he deserves the credit. He's he's he's, uh, he's a great friend of mine still. Yeah. And he calls me from time to time. He wants me to go live. <laughs> he does. Cool. He wants to train with me. He wants to train me, you know, and he wants to go live. He wants me to go live with him. I say, <laughs> you know, we, we got to get stuff together, and you know, hopefully, we'll be able to get down there with you. Yeah. And so you're just gonna move yeah. in with him? Ain't you married? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's, 
But you know, but you know, he, he's he's trying to get me over there some way somehow because uh, <laughs> he feels that you know he under under his uh, training regimen, I'll be able to get right back up to uh, where I belong. And I said, you know, Leo, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah. And I also believe that with my training regimen, I'm going to do the same. So when I do, and we're able to, I'll go over there and we'll train. You know, until then, you got to wait it out, you know. Yeah. I mean, he's going to live till he's 170 <laughs> years old, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> that guy's awesome. He's a great guy. I think he's just a turtle. <laughs> he's going to live to 170. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, and, and his wife, she's, she's a beautiful person also. I get along with his wife, and, you know, I'll call her, cause his name's Cora. Hey, Cora, how's it going? How are you? I'll say, well, I'll have a 20 minute conversation before I even get him on the phone, you know, because yeah. uh, she's a very <laughs> nice person. You know. <laughs> you know, he's a good guy. He's a That's good guy. Cool, he gives me a hard time, you know. Yeah. I tell you, Leo, why do you call me and bug me, man? <laughs> Shit, don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> I'm not gonna put this in there because he, he's gonna be heartbroken. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and he'll kill me for cussing. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, he's a devout Christian. The guy makes—I swear to you—he makes me pray every time we end a conversation. Huh. You know, and and every day that we would train, so we would pray. You know, and it, which was great though. You know, it brought structure to uh, my life, and it allowed me to to understand, um, you know, the, the meaning of um, scheduling and, and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. I'd get up, I'd, I'd go run and we'd go do that, and then after we'd train, and he'd take me along, you know, he'd take me along. Great guy, mm-hmm. great, great individual in my life, my boxing life, and my, my just my life, period, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's the part I'll put in the article. <laughs> yeah, please, please. You know what? He's gonna want to, He's probably gonna tell me to send this copy to him because he, you know, it, 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 um, I talk about him. You know, I talk good about him. So, yeah, yeah if uh, anything that has to do with him, he loves to keep it for his, for his scrapbook collection. Yeah, you know, I think, you know it just yeah. blows it blows your ego up. He's yeah. now he's I believe he's eighty six. Yeah. I'll rush you <laughs> I want to yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm telling you, he's gonna, don't worry. He's going to take his <laughs> no. time because he's going to live to his 170. I'm telling you. <laughs> he's a bad man. He's, yeah. he's, you know, and, and I love the guy. You know, yeah. he's, he's awesome. He's a great guy. That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Really cool. Fight. After that fight, was that you fought a young guy, Mauricio Herrera? He went on to some yeah. big things. How, how was that fighting him? You know, um, they had told me, it was funny because during that time, I kind of like made my way to the gym and, you know, I did my thing and uh, I think I'll fight again. Yeah, I think I will. So um, I made my way over to Hollywood and I I went to Wild Card initially to get sparring and I kind of wanted to put myself out there. So I got some sparring and then after going for a couple of weeks, no one wanted to spar. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, I couldn't get sparring. So then I looked up, um, uh, you know, any other surrounding gyms, and I ran into Fortune Gym, and that's when I went over there to Fortune. Mm-hmm. You know, I got sparring, you know, and, and uh, nice. you know, I, I went, you know, for a couple of days, two or three days in a row, and um, and I liked the gym. It was cool and. Um, and you know, uh, that's when uh, I told Justin, you know, hey, you wanna, you know, you wanna train me or something? <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's, yeah, he's saying, sure. So he, um, a gentleman by the name of Mike Jacoby was there, and he just, he came up to me and he got me to fight. He asked me if I wanted to fight this kid in three weeks. And at the time, I was preparing myself. So I said. Yeah, sure, why not? So so we took the fight, and, you know, it was kind of like the, I was like in the, you know, uh, Goyo Vargas, you know, uh, spot, and Reese Herrera was this up-and-coming kid, mm-hmm. and I and I saw him, and I didn't really see much, but I said, damn, what the hell, you know, I'll fight him, I don't care. Yeah. 
Mm. You know, and um, and I fought him, and and I I I, I surprised him. You know, I don't think the scores were they were they were close, but I don't think they. I deserve a little more credit, you know, because I beat him. I beat him decisively. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I I just outworked him, you know, and uh, and the guy had no answer for for my punches. I'll fight him again. I'll fight him anytime he wants. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know because you know because you know it was a split decision and. He couldn't believe it, and his trainer couldn't believe it. And I know his trainer, you know, and, and you know they just wanted to. Oh no, why? You know, oh I can't believe it. You know, but I yeah. beat him. Yeah. I beat him. How did you yeah, feel I, when you found Justin Fortune as, as your trainer? What did you see in him that made you click with Justin Fortune? Uh, um, Justin was, uh, you know, he's, you know, just. A jerk, and uh, you know he. Uh, yeah, so, you know I mean I he hard ass. <laughs> He's a hard ass. You know that's what I'm. That's what I'm. Yeah, not yeah, a jerk, yeah, a hard ass. Yeah, uh, that's kind of like what you know. Yeah, you know that's like what I. Um, you know, I was like cool. You know, I dig it. Yeah, I don't mind. You know, yeah. and uh, and you know he's um, very offensive uh, when it comes to the boxing. He'll tell you um, to uh, work more on the offense than the defense. I would say, mm -hmm. you know, he was dry. He was driven toward that area. So, me being a defensive uh, type of fighter, I was able to incorporate both. You know, which was great. You know, mm -hmm. which was awesome. You know. Um, and, uh, I mean, with Herrera, he didn't really punch me that much, you know, in the face. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe, maybe you know, he caught me a couple times, but for the most part, you know, I was able to, you know, dodge everything and, and give him, you know, I give him a lot, you know. So, mm -hmm. so with Justin, um, he was pretty, uh, you know, I'm... He, he 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 was he was a good coach, you know. Uh, just we just uh, kind of, you know, we we couldn't find that after that fight. You know, it was against uh, Freddie Hernandez. Freddie Hernandez. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I lost that fight, and that's kind of after that. It was just kind of like, you know, I I was trying to find answers, and he was trying to find answers, and. You know, there was, uh, there was stuff, I just want to say stuff in my life that was, um, that was happening and, and, um, you know, it was kind of like, we kind of fizzled out, I guess, mm -hmm. our, our relationship. And I, I don't really plan on, you know, going back, you know. It's unfortunate because I felt that uh, you know we, we we could have gone longer, um, but I I I don't uh, you know I, I I called them and I told them you know that I, I don't think it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. you know, so you <coughs> and know, I, what I, happened? In, I'm sorry. What happened in the Freddie Hernandez fight? Um, Freddie Hernandez. I just uh, there was it was it was a lot of mental stuff going on with me, I believe, and um, I mentally lost it before I physically lost it. Hmm. So you kind of were burnt out on boxing, period. At that time. Mm, that and there was just other other stuff going on in my life that I kind of had to sort out and. That kind of weighed on me as well, and, mm -hmm. you know, and and uh, it was just a lot of distractions, and um, you know, I, I hate to to make excuses for every loss mm -hmm. because I lost, you know. But and there's a reason. There's a reason for everything. yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I, I just wasn't confident that the loss was. Uh, was 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 a loss, you know. It was some. There's always, you know, there was something involved with it. So mm -hmm. that there, with that loss there, you know, it was just, uh, you know, 
it was crap. Mm-hmm. Um, what I want to do um, with my career, and just like every other fighter uh, who who is trying to get to that next um, level of, of respect, is go and defeat my losses. You know, I want to fight Darlene Hernandez. I want to fight Jorge Barrios. I want to fight Darlene Hernandez. I want to fight Freddie Hernandez. I want to fight all of them again. I want to rematch them, and I want to beat them. Mm-hmm. And when can we see you in the ring again? It's been a while. Where you been? Yeah, it has. It has. I've, I've kind of, you know, slowly uh, getting back into the groove of things. Uh, I've kind of been wandering from gym to gym in Southern California. Um trying to get some spying and just, you know, just, just training, uh, I'm step, I took a step up, um, this, uh, this month I've taken a, a step up in my, in my work, uh, rate and, you know, um, right now we're kind of, like I say, Justin and I are, are not, um, working together anymore, so we have to find a, another chief second which is you know it's it's a uh, it's a job in itself mm-hmm. um we have to find someone that we're able to mesh with and we're, we're able to you know have confidence in mm-hmm. and um i acquired a new manager um and he's, he's uh you know our relationship is is great um and he's um able to He's willing um, to help me, uh, to help me with my career, you know. So um, right now, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm building my team, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, all I need is a trainer now. I got my manager now. I need a trainer, and we'll be able to proceed. So is there a time frame on it when when you'll be back, Larry? Um, I want to say. I want to say within the next couple of months, mm-hmm. because cool. I, you know, yeah, I've been working and I feel great, you know, and um, you know, I mean, I've gotten the physical and nothing's wrong with my marbles <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> or 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 any, you know, any physical limb in my body, uh, you know, nothing, you know, everything's uh, about to give me a green light, so. Um, I'm just working at, at a you know steady uh, um, progressive pace, and um, you will see me in the near future in the ring. Yeah, great man. And wh- what's boxing done for you? Boxing has saved, saved my life. Yeah. Yes, boxing saved my life. To put it bluntly. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, you can take whatever you want out of that, but boxing has saved my life. And let's see. So, what have you been doing with your time since 2010, your last fight? Um, I, 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 I actually work um, with kids at the Jerry's boxing gym, uh, and I've kind of. I kind of got into that. I, I took on a heavier, um, a heavier uh, responsibility at one point, and then, um, then I decided, all right, now it's time to come back. So I weaned off a little, and I'll go there. I'll still, you know, go help out at least once a week, um, and that's uh, Jim and Almani. I did that. Um, I would uh, construction a little little odd men's job, uh, I kind of trained in between all that, and, um, uh, pfft. you know, other than that, it's just been slowly, you know, meth- and slowly and methodically regaining my, my focus and my, 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 uh, my physical, uh, fighting, hmm. uh, body frame. That, mm-hmm. that, that I need to get back into the ring. Mm-hmm. I've been working on myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you're married with how many kids? No kids. Oh, you got no, no kids. kids. No kids. Mm-hmm. Married mm-hmm. three years. We um we celebrated the third year anniversary past August. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. This this next August 
is going to be four years. So, yeah, uh, this past August is the 30th anniversary. Uh, and uh, it's been great. You know, it's, it's, Good, man. And, and you know? I didn't hear one thing you said. I didn't hear it. You, you work at the uh, something Ortiz Boxing Gym. What one was it? Jerry Ortiz. Jerry yeah. Ortiz Boxing. I volunteer there. I don't even work there. I, I, I work there a little, but you could just pull volunteer because... You know, that's just predominantly mm. what I, what yeah, my right. time went to, volunteering. Okay. And and it's J-E-R-R-Y? Yes. Jerry Ortiz is a, a gentleman. He was in my corner one time yeah, for, heard his name funny. Yeah, from, from my championship fight. Mm -hmm. And then about four or five months later, get shot, killed. Oh. Unbelievable. That's Unbelievable. Sick. Great guy, too. I mean, he was one of my, one of my, you know, one of my great friends, hmm. and uh, and he gets shot and killed. Oh, it's sucks, man. Horrible, yeah. How horrible, was horrible. I want to say he was like in his early thirties, something like that. Maybe early to mid thirties. Hmm. Lousy man. I mean, young guy, good-looking guy. You know, uh, he had two kids. You know, and and uh, gutsy. I mean, like, he was a boxer. You know, and. Uh, that's a guy, and he did it. He went on a call on his own, and they said he shouldn't have. And uh, he, but he did anyway, and he ended up getting shot right in the head. Yeah. And, and point blank, it's like Jesus. I, I, I felt both hatred and sadness at the same time. It was horrible when I found out. Mm. You know, and, and at the time, it was a, it was you know, it was like maybe. I want to say like two, three months after my loss, and I wasn't in the greatest shape or in the greatest mindset. So when that happened, that was like you know, you know it was something on top of my sorrows, it just added to my sorrows pretty much. Hmm. And that was before what fight was it? Excuse me. It happened before what fight? It happened after oh, okay. uh, my first loss, which yeah. is to yeah. Horace Barrios. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it was horrible. Yeah. It was bad. It was bad on top of bad, you know? Yeah. It does suck, man. But that's all I got for you. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. What's that? What did you say? I, didn't, I thought you were done. No, I was going to say worse on top of bad, you know? It was worse than that. Hmm. Yeah. It was like a one-two punch. Yeah, that's what it was. You know? it, was it was horrible. Hmm. It, was, it was just, I mean, I had gone to the guy's wedding, like, maybe, you know, uh, three weeks prior to that. Three weeks. Three weeks prior to that. Mm -hmm. you know, and uh, you know, I'm newly married. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable to hear that. Mm -hmm. I still, I'm still in disbelief of, of how he's gone. I mean, the guy was young. Good guy, too. Really cool. Really mellow. You know, he was in my corner. He was in the... I, I just flew him over to Florida. You know, and and uh, you know, he, you know, he'd go and visit me in, in training. Sometimes he owned a Harley, and you know, you could hear him from a mile away coming down. You know, because the guy had them glass packs on there, and he, you know, it was just an average. You know, it's just it's really a energetic, adventurous guy. And we went to some fights together, and he was, he was like, you know, he was like, he was a good friend, really good friend. It's horrible too. Lose them, yeah. yeah. You know, you'd make a good commentator, man. You talk good, <laughs> you know. <laughs> no, I've, I've been wanting to. I've been wanting to get into that. You know, I think that's uh, that's my calling right there. Mm -hmm. Commentate, commentating fight. I love, I love talking boxing. As you know, talking period is in my repertoire. So <laughs> talking boxing, talking boxing would even and getting paid for it would even be better. And that's mm -hmm. something that I've. I, I think I want to venture into as well. Yeah, I think you've got a future, man. That's great. I appreciate that. Thank you. You're you know, because that, that just that adds, uh, that adds, you know, adds a little more, builds up my self-esteem to go and actually do it. <laughs> yeah, I could do that. For you. You could, yeah, you could actually say that you're a part of that thing you see me on TV. You know? <laughs> all right, buddy. I'll let you go, man. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, all right.